Hi, YouTube family of believers. This is Daughter of the Most High. Today, I was sitting out in the sun reading this book, Miss the Mark by Stan Johnson. Stan Johnson has a YouTube channel called Prophecy Club. You may be familiar with it. He teaches many um, or shares many videos on end time teachings, and he also shares information from other people as well. And so um, he's got a wealth of information about end time um, events, prophecies or dreams that people have, experiences, and he shares that to help um, people to be more knowledgeable and more prepared for the end times. So uh, I was reading this out in the sun today, and I'll share what, um, what I was reading that really um, touched my heart today and just um, as... You know, those of you that listen to my channel know that God has awakened me to the times that we live in um, in the past few years. And he's also given me a desire to um, um, share teachings and to share warnings so that people can, um, you know, repent, make changes, be informed and be safe in the end times. So, um Let's talk a little bit about the end time events. Um, what are the end time events? The end time events are a time of judgment on the earth. So why is God judging the earth? God is judging the earth for the people that ignored his attempts to reach people through his word through the sending of his son, through the death of Jesus on the cross, uh, through the prophets, through um, regular people like myself that he may share or uh, give a dream or a vision or something and regarding the end times or regarding our walk with God. And um, he does this to uh, so that we can write books and do videos and share this information but he also sees how many people just ignore this information and they particularly ignore it regarding the end times and I understand that they become afraid of it or they minimize it or they think it's far up the road. But the fact is, is it's not very far up the road at all, which is why God is waking people up, including myself, so that I can learn more and then I can share it. So God is judging the earth for um, neglecting and uh, ignoring all of the ways that he has reached out to us to save us from sin and to save us from eternal hell. We have a sin problem on the earth and many people don't know that, don't understand that, or they've heard of it, but they don't care about it. They don't put any effort into understanding what is this? What is this sin problem that God's talking about? Why did God send his son to the earth? They've heard it, but they don't check into it at all. That was me as well. I had heard about sin, and I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. And I think most of us don't because we feel like we're good people. We try to lead, for the most part, a decent life, according to our thinking. The fact is, is that we are very fallen individuals and our mind and our understanding is very dimmed and very dulled from being steeped in we are actually steeped in a sinful environment and so we think we know i thought i knew you probably think you know and the fact is is we don't know and we have to trust the fact that god has been reaching out to us and why he's been reaching out to us and and actually seek him and gain the understanding and revelation of what's going on on the earth. So let's start back at the beginning. What is the sin problem? Where did it come from? Now, if you've heard of Lucifer, you've probably heard of Satan. Satan is his name now. He was Lucifer in heaven. He was one of the archangels. Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. And Lucifer was, of course, everything that God makes is beautiful. But 
Lucifer was beautiful. He was musical. He was magnificent. He is called the, oh, no, I can't remember what it's called, something cherub. Anyway, he had this glorious position in heaven and he didn't want to be like God. He wanted to be God. His pride took over and he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be like the Most High. And that's how sin was birthed in him. So when sin was birthed in him, he was kicked out of heaven. And his name changed to Satan. And he was stripped of, of everything. He was stripped of everything that God had given him. And now he is pure evil. He's been pure evil for a long time. And we know from the book of Genesis that God created the heavens and the earth and the mountains and the oceans and the animals and everything and the vegetation. God created everything and he created Adam and Eve and he put them in the garden. Well, what was in the garden? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan being the father of lies and pure evil tricked Adam. He came to Adam in the form of a serpent and tricked Adam out of his dominion. God had given Adam dominion over everything on the earth and Satan tricked him out of it. He tricked them by saying, did God really say? Yeah, he, that's what Satan does. He, question, he, he wants us to question God. Did God really say he doesn't want you to be like him? Um, he doesn't want you to eat of the tree because he doesn't want you to be like him. Surely you shall not die. Well, the fact is, is God said it is that way and it's that way. So Satan has had dominion um, for the past 6,000 years. And um, sin is a problem and continues to be a problem. And sin is a problem because it separates us from God. God is perfectly holy. God is all-powerful. He's majestic. He's awesome. He's all-knowing. He's everything. But he's holy. God is holy and pure. And when we have sin in our life, sin separates us from God. So sin is a problem. Sin was a problem back then. Sin is a problem now. Um, let's go to a few verses in the Bible that talk about sin. Romans chapter 5 says that sin entered the world through one man, Adam. And sin... We can be forgiven of our sin and cleansed of our sin through Jesus. So sin entered the world through Adam, and we can be cleansed of sin through one man, Jesus. Why don't most people pay any attention to sin? It's because they feel like they're good people. I think all of us feel like we are good people. I used to think I'm a good person. I knew that I had sin in my life. And I knew that I needed a savior, but I didn't take sin. Um, I didn't understand to be sin to be as serious as it is. I've really grown in that area in the past few years. God has really awakened me to that. So I live most of my Christian life. Now I knew that lying was wrong. Stealing was wrong. Things like that were wrong. But some of the other things, I think we all have sins that we just think, you know, it's not that big of a deal. We minimize it and we are relying and leaning on our own understanding in that area. And we should not do that. I've done it too. The fact is, is that sin is extremely serious and we have to understand that. So um, most people feel like, I was just looking at my computer screen. I've got my verses up here. Most people feel like they're just an average person, a good person, and yes, they have a few faults, but they're basically a good person. And the fact is, is that, you know, if there is sin in our life, 
We need Jesus. We need forgiveness. We need to be cleansed and we need to be restored to God. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and we all need to understand the severity of sin and what it means for us. And that's why I'm doing this teaching is because I God has really awakened me and I want to help awaken others to what this is. So um, Romans 5.8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So God has been reaching out and reaching out and reaching out to us in various ways so that he, he's warning us and he's pointing out the way, but most people ignore it. And there was times in the past that I ignored it too. Um, the thing that we have to understand, we have to understand that sin is very serious. We can, even as a believer, like the verse that says that if we don't forgive, we are not forgiven. So let's say we live our whole life. We're a good mom. We're a good parent. You know, we're good to our family. We're active in the church. We've done, you know, various things, various outreaches. Let's say we have unforgiveness in our heart. Do you know that that unforgiveness will keep you out of heaven? Do you know that? If you are in ministry and you have an anointing on your life, because there's people in ministry that have an anointing on their life, but that are also living in adultery or living in fornication, do you know that even despite that ministry calling, walking in your calling, that you will end up in hell if you don't repent of your sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Adultery is sin. Fornication is sin. Greed is sin. Anything that we do that God calls sin, we need to take seriously. So um, the fact is, is that we can, the thing that you have to understand is we can miss on one point and still end up in hell. So I'm going to share an illustration real quickly to help you understand that. So this, this is my person. This is a person. And this person has been living life on the earth. And maybe, you know, lives a fairly, fairly decent life, but has sin here, sin there, you know, the lie here, um, maybe was in fornication before he or she got married, never repented of it, feels like, well, we were going to get married anyway. This is sin on your life. This is how you look. Let's say you get a revelation of sin and you understand that you need to be forgiven. You need to repent of your sin and be forgiven. So the blood of Jesus then will come and take away your sin when you confess your sin and the blood of Jesus will take away your sin. And this is what you look like once you know Jesus. This is you. You're white. Your sins are white. You're cleansed. You don't have sin in your life. Now you've, you feel good. You're getting back into life. You feel like you're walking with the Lord and then you get tempted and you fall into another area of sin. And it's something that you enjoy. Maybe it's something that you don't even fully see and understand is sin. And this is what you become. You've got some sin stains on your life. This is how you look. When we have sin in our life, we have to know that sin separates us from God. If we don't repent of this sin, this sin will keep you out of heaven. This sin could be um, fornication. It could be adultery. It could be idolatry. It could be um, uh, greed. It could be the um, sins listed in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. 
we're in that sin and we may we may be a good spouse we may be a good parent we may even have a church ministry but we've got this sin in our life let's say this sin is adultery let's say that some people have reached out to us and tried to talk to us about our adultery or to talk to us about our fornication or have talked to us about um you know our selfishness and our greediness our heart matters the condition of our heart matters and we cannot have you know for the most part a good heart and then have sin in our life if we don't repent of this sin this sin's going to keep us out of heaven you have to know that you must repent of this sin because this could be unforgiveness this was me some years ago i did so many things right i was in ministry I have an anointing on my life. My hands heat up with the anointing. I would get words for people. And I was in unforgiveness toward my ex and my sister for hurting me. Not a little bit, not a few times, hurting me so badly that it almost took me out. And I felt justified in my unforgiveness. And the fact is, is that unforgiveness was a stain on my life like this is. And it would have kept me out of heaven if I would have died. Now, praise God, I didn't die in that. I want to stay like this. I want no sin in my life. I want no sin in my life. If I do make a mistake, if I'm, you know, short-tempered, if I, you know, say the wrong thing, if I'm, you know, I... Again, I don't do a whole lot. I'm pretty far into my walk now that, you know, I don't really struggle with sin like I did years ago. It wasn't very long ago that I was this, as I just showed you. This was me. And I thought because the majority of my life was really good and I felt very fruitful. I loved the ministry I was in. I still had this. I had this stain on my life. Unforgiveness. Mm hmm. So the thing that we have to understand is that um, even one area of sin that we keep to ourselves and we think it's no big deal and, you know, maybe it's God's grace covers me or whatever people think. No, nope. You have to confess your sin. You have to walk the narrow path and confess your sin. Repent of your sin. Some people think, will say, God forgives me. You know, God forgives me for this adulterous marriage. His grace covers me. The fact is, is that's not the case. You cannot be forgiven of any sin that you've not repented of. A, a, a forgiveness is always available to you. But if you don't confess that sin and repent and, um, you know, stay away from it, stay out of it, whatever it is, you know, I'm using adultery as an example or my sin of unforgiveness, but there can be um, a porn habit. It can be lusting habit that we've indulged in and indulged in, you know, and it's just like our pet sin and God understands and I've been alone a long time and life's been hard for me, you know, and we'll think God, under that's what I thought. God understands. My life's been so hard. They've been so mean to me. They've hurt me in so many ways. God understands. I have a special case going. That's what I actually thought and believed. I did. I believed and was relying on, and I was wrong. Thank heaven I've repented. Um, so please know that. Please understand that. That sin is very serious. And I'm going to read um, a little bit out of Stan's book here. Um, i got to figure out how to do this so I can see and read this part this book this little book is so good and if you want one you can either get one from stan's ministry on prophecy club or you can um request one from me i'll mail it to you um this is a man called his name is one previous page over oh gosh where is it I'll spell his name. Prophet, and it's D-U-M-I-T-R-U, and his last name is spelled D-U 
D-U-M-A-N. And it's his testimony. And I'm just going to read a portion of it. And this is included in Stan's book. Oh, hang on, be patient with me. I'm losing my place here. Okay. He says here, um, and he said, I brought, this is God. He said, I brought you to this country. I'm not sure how to say his name. Dimitru. Um, Dimitru, I want to wake up a lot of people. I love this country. I love the people. I want to save them. America will burn. How can I save them? I can't even speak their language. God had brought him to California. Who knows me here? How will they call me? He said, don't worry. I will be ahead of you. I will make great healings among the American people. You will go to television stations, radio stations, and churches. Tell them everything I tell you. Don't hide anything. If you try to hide anything, I will punish you. America will burn. And uh, Dimitru says, how will America burn? It is so powerful. And God said, the Russian spies have discovered where the most powerful nuclear missiles are in America. The fall of America will start with an internal revolution in America, started by the communists. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. The government will be busy with internal problems. Then from the oceans, Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, and two other countries that he's saying he can't remember will attack. The Russians will bombard the nuclear missiles in America, and America will burn. I said, what will you do with the church? And this was God's response to him. The church has left me. I said, how? Don't you have people here? God says, people in America honor people. The honor that should be given to God they give to other people. Americans think highly of themselves. They say, I serve God, but they don't. In the church, there is divorce, adultery, fornication, sodomy, abortion, and all kinds of sin. Jesus Christ doesn't live in sin. He lives in holiness. I brought you here so you could cry out loud. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Tell them to stop sinning. God never stops forgiving. Tell them to repent. He will forgive them. Tell them to start preparing themselves so I can save them in the day of trouble. Wow, that's what I was reading outside today. I said, how will you save the church if America will burn? He said, tell them as I tell you. As he saved the three young men from the oven of fire and Daniel, or Daniel, Daniel, from the mouth of the lion, that is how I will save them. Tell them to stop sinning and repent. I have blessed this country because the Jews are here. I have seven million Jews here. They haven't tasted war or persecution. God blessed them more than anyone else. Instead of thanking God, they started sinning and doing wickedness. Their sins have reached the Holy One. God will punish them with fire. Israel doesn't recognize the Messiah because they place their trust on the power of the Jews in America. When God will hit America, all the nations will be terrified. Oh. Okay, so that's what I was reading today. That's just a portion of it. It's such a good book. And God has just given me such a heart and an interest and a desire to learn about the end times. And so that's why I share, and that's why I'm sharing in this video. I started this video about 10 times before I actually got it done. I kept making mistakes, and um, I, don't, I don't have a way to edit them out like some people do. I just turn on my camera, and I start sharing. So if I make a mistake, and if it's bad enough, I have to start over again. So the enemy does fight us on things, and he is fighting me on this. So please know that... Sin is a serious problem. We are not once saved, always saved. No, we must abide in him. We must forsake all sin. 
Um, many people believe that our sins are forgiven past, present, and future. They aren't. Why does Jesus talk about repentance? Why does he talk about the narrow path? Why does Paul talk about fighting the good fight if it's all done for us? You know why? Because it's not all done for us. Like some people think and teach. And like it said in this book that God, when God was talking to that man, um, Demetru, or whatever, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, the church has left me. The church has created their own church and their own way of being and doing. And the fact is, is they've been tricked. And and the thing is, no, pardon me. Um, Satan has, he is, he's still such a serpent. And he, like he'll, like he's, he's spoken to various people and he misleads them. And he teaches them that things like, our sins are forgiven past, present, and future. My future sins are forgiven if I repent of them. My present sins are forgiven if I repent of them. I can't stay in an adulterous marriage and, and expect to be forgiven just because I confess it, but then I stay married in it. And it's not actually a marriage. God doesn't recognize adulterous marriages. It's, it's sin. He just sees it as sin. So... I'm just encouraging you to please understand that God has made a way for us and he is urgently reaching out to us uh, so that we can know him and walk with him on the narrow path. And the fact is, is that, you know, yes, there is a price to walking with God. There is a price. Jesus did so much for us that the little bit of obedience that he asks of, asks of us is so small compared to um, what we have eternally. Please understand that. Please understand that perspective that, you know, um, we don't need to pursue all our own goals. Pursue the things that God has put in your heart. Pursue the things that are meaningful to him and his people. That's what we're here for. Our time on the earth is to um, grow up in God and then to reach others. So please, um, please,